All quiet, please. Well, we are back. We are back. Welcome. My name is David Voss from Cooking with One Hand. You might see us over at Mashable. You can also catch us at cookingwithonehand.com. We make shows about food because we love food. We love cooks. We love people that love food, and they love us right back. And it's a strange show we do at Cooking with One Hand in that I cook with one hand, and I film with the other. But that's on Wednesday over at Mashable. At the end of the week, on Saturday, it comes into this great exploration, this great explosion of joy here at America's Test Kitchen with different cooks. These are people that really know what they're doing, love and live food. Help us with what we did beforehand. I've got Ashley Moore over here. Hi. And this is <coughs> Brian Roof. <laughs> yeah, Brian Roof. <laughs> Brian and I have been um, fighting amicably in the hallways for a couple of weeks now about who makes a better chicken. And, uh, Me, I most likely me, right? <laughs> it's most most likely. It's it, it could be you. Or Everybody makes a beautiful chicken. Everybody should know how to make a roasted chicken. Ashley's no slouch when it comes to chicken. And roasting a chicken is a great thing to do. You should know how to do it. You will know how to do it. And that is what we're going to be doing today. Um, the hows and whys, uh, the full expression of the beautiful bird when it's roasted. And we've got a lot of questions. You can comment as well. We're taking all kinds of questions today. If you want to learn anything about chicken, you come to the right place. So we are going to start with uh, what you folks call a, a weeknight roasted chicken? It is a weeknight right. roasted chicken, yep. And the idea here is that it's done in under one hour. You're gonna have a fully rendered, beautifully cooked uh, chicken, and it starts in a pretty hot oven, 450 degrees, um, but there's a pretty clever trick in there too. Now, when I hear that someone's gonna start something, particularly a chicken, uh, at a high temperature, I'm thinking you're trying to sear. Right? Absolutely. Okay. And the hallmark, one of the hallmarks of a great chicken is Crispy skin. Mm -hmm. Crispy skin at the same time that takes high temperature, but we don't want to dry up the meat. We want a moist chicken. Right. We are holding those two ideals in our head mm -hmm. simultaneously <laughs> as they conflict. Uh, well, ah! yeah. And I think it's your recipe, so <laughs> Jimmy, yeah. lay on McDuff. <laughs> Lead on McDuff. Tell us. comments here about not needing hairnets. <laughs> oh, I thought you were me. I was like, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Everybody's didn't a you get, didn't you get I forgot my hairnet <laughs> tonight, guys. <laughs> Didn't you get the memo? Well, did you? You think I? It's you, upstairs. Yes, you should have seen me last week. I wasn't like this. <laughs> Red curly hair. Big ginger. I, I had knew to shave it. it so I could be like this guy. I knew okay, it. Okay, so we're gonna start with the weeknight chicken. Yes. And um, uh, this is your recipe. Yes. Yes, okay. it is. Um, okay. Now, what do we have here for a chicken? Me. Me. I'll yeah. talk. All Talk about, about it. it. Okay, so this is your regular three and a half to four pound uh, roaster chicken. Um, you can find these in any kind of grocery store, uh, some farmers markets even. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by patting it dry. And by patting it dry, it's going to help to make all the seasonings stick as well as possible to the skin, and it's going to get the skin as crispy as possible, which is now exactly what we want. Now, on my bird, what we did on my show is I do kind of a poor man's air dry in that I, and I saw you guys doing it here as well, mm -hmm. we leave the chicken uncovered in the refrigerator for at least a night, maybe two, mm -hmm. and it dries, gets blotchy and unsightly, and that's the whole point, because we want to get in here with a dry bird, because if it's moist, it's going to steam. Sure. Whereas dry, we get the, uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a great point, but for all intents and purposes, there are times where, you know, you're going home from work, and it's 5.30, and you have to get food on the table, so, um, Let's pretend it's 5.30 on a Tuesday night, and I'm going to make a weeknight roast chicken. Huh? What are you making for dinner? <laughs> weeknight roast chicken, huh? All right, so first what we're going to do is um, there's a whole thing. Do you want to take the, um, the wishbone out? Yeah, we could. Do you want to do it? I don't know. You want to? Go for it. All right. Tag team. <laughs> Sometimes to make it easier to carve, we'll remove the wishbone from this portion of the chicken. So you would just do that by running the knife on either side of it. And then you can stick your finger in there and kind of. And that's because the wishbone is really the rafters that give so much structure to the right. bird. And you're going to have a hard time carving it. Now that that's out, they, we have one monolithic, soft, loving cushion of breast here. Hey, 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 hey. Get out the chicken. No, he's massaging it. He's <laughs> relaxing her before she goes into the oven. Okay, uh, there are many different opinions about what one should do in prepping a chicken, cleaning it or not. You guys have strong held beliefs about the washing, rinsing, drying, oh, yeah. and not Absolutely. Never wash it. Don't wash it. Don't wash it. Because if you wash your chicken, let's say I were to wash the chicken right now, and I had 
Beautifully cooked mashed potatoes and Brussels sprouts. I don't know why they'd be cooked now instead of after. Because you like to get stuff done, done ahead of time. Done, done yeah. before I cook my chicken. <laughs> um, but let's say it was sitting next to the sink and I went to rinse my chicken in the sink and I got a little splatter on the mashed potatoes and Brussels sprouts. Your life's over. I'd have to throw them That's out. It. Okay, uh, I'm going to be, I'm a, I'm a guest, so I'll be polite. Okay. I find that to be so silly. So why, do you, why do you wash your chicken? Yeah. Because if you ever see what happens. You're going to put it in a 450 degree oven. You, do, you definitely want to clean it off. But, and well, chickens, clean off chickens are, are not the chicken. The bacteria that's what rife in there, my man. You're going to in a 450 yeah. degree oven, though. But that's just, what we rely on the heat for, though. And I, and I get it, and I mm. do that. But the, the worry that it's going to somehow, this toxic spill is going to backsplash onto somewhere in the kitchen. If that were the truth, then everything we cleaned, we would never clean in a sink because you know, it's toxicity. I know that you, uh, you quote a lot of famous chefs, but you know Alain Ducasse? always swore that you never wash a chicken because you wash away some of the flavor. Here's where you're right. Here's where it's about <laughs> what kind of chicken. What brand? Mm -hmm. it's, this is a uh, Bell & Evans. Evans chicken. Yeah. Bell Evans. That is a good point. You know, there's so many chickens available today, and the price points are wide-ranging. You can get them 79 cents to $4 a pound. And some of the less expensive chickens, some of the more mass-produced chickens, are filled with, besides the chemicals and the antibiotics and the growth Water. hormones, water and yeah. the water mass when you take them out there they're waterlogged and yes you're getting uh, more bang for the buck but you're really paying chicken prices for water yeah right. now my greatest greatest hero my one of my top heroes uh jacques pepin he did berate a great cook uh Dor Dottie Go dorothy um, greenspan, greenspan uh -huh. when she was washing a chicken so I, I i can't fight you too much but <laughs> um i do wash my chickens because i think there's bacteria in there i dry them up i don't let it splat everywhere and why but do you dry the chicken the chicken has to be dry because... It's going to become crispier when you cook it, and it's going to help the seasoning stick a lot better to the skin. So we're going to get on with it, but the two yes. things, the, the platonic ideal of a roasted chicken is twofold. You want a crispy skin, and you want moist meat. The meat being moist is a little tricky because different parts of the chicken cook at different rates. That's true. We actually want different temperatures. The breast is going to cook quicker than the... Thighs. Because <laughs> white meat cooks co faster than... Dark meat. Dark meat is dark because of... The musculature. <laughs> it's more work. Blood flow. Okay. All right. But we'll it's really, you know, one. people make a lot of, people, let, they do Tomato. make a lot <laughs> We're making a lot of it. People do make a lot of the, the hows and whys of chickens. What I love about this recipe, and you are going to take it away, is yep. it's simple. So simple. Okay. Three ingredients. Four, including the chicken. Okay. So, first thing we're going to do, and I think this is going to start another discussion or topic of trussing. We don't truss here in America's Test Kitchen, um, for the most part. But what we do do is uh, for even cooking, we tuck the wings behind the breast, just like so. And then now we how does eventually... That, how, does give us, how does that give us a, a more even cooking? It just keeps the wing tips from standing out. And, and burning. Uh, and burning the tips off. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you want to fully expose the breast, is what you're trying to Absolutely, do. Absolutely, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to keep those tucked in. But first, I'm going to mix some kosher salt and pepper together. And kosher salt, I find, is really great in these applications because it's got those larger, sharper grains. Absolutely. If you use the regular iodized salt, it's going to fall off the bird. Mm -hmm. These are going to, we want to prong them in there. It's almost like a steak up poivre. You, yeah. you want to get some traction. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, but first, before I put the salt and pepper on, I'm going to drizzle the all or the vegetable oil, rather, all over the bird. Because if you put the oil on last, it's just going to... Wipe off the salt and the pepper. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome, Ashley. Okay. Just get on in there. Don't be afraid. We're going to flip Which it back came over. First, the chicken or the egg? Well, we'll talk about that later. Do you want to use um, your clean hands? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. I'm going to go over here and wash real quick. So whenever we season, we try and get a little bit of height on it so it falls evenly onto the bird. Mm -hmm. It also just looks sexier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you look cooler doing it. Yes. I feel cool. <laughs> I'm going to sneak behind you. Please. And then during this, we have had, um, in that 450-degree oven, we have had a 12-inch skillet um, on the medium rack preheating. And this is going to help um, do what we kind of mentioned earlier, and it's going to help by searing the thighs. But first, we're, we're going to truss the drumsticks. And, you know, look, especially with the great recipe like this that is so simple, mm -hmm. it does not take you much longer to make two chickens in one. And everybody knows the day after for a chicken is a beautiful day. So oh, yeah. don't be shy. Once we teach you tonight the hows and whys and the ins and outs of making a beautiful roasted chicken, all the ways we're going to show you. Mm -hmm. How um, is that not make too much salt? Because, all right, so look at this. This chicken is, the breast meat is about that thick. Uh, the thigh meat's even more dense, about the same thickness. Just the surface salt is really going to help 
season the outside and when you cut that piece of chicken and you eat the skin together with all that meat on the inside, it kind of all comes out in the wash. Yeah, you're not going to have to add more salt and pepper when you're eating because it's already mm -hmm. fully seasoned for you. So would you put a pan of water in the oven while it's cooking and why is it crust? Would you put a pan of water in there? Some people do that because they want to steam the bird. Yeah. And, um, that's, you know, there are so many, there, it's a very simple thing to do, but there's so many ways to make birds. There's so many books about it, and there's so many different techniques, right. and they all have something to them. Right. So, so I think that's why people, I've seen people that do that in there. And the other question was... Why do you truss a bird? Um, that's simply for even cooking. I mean, otherwise, if you have um, the drumsticks kind of opening up, and if you have the wings opening up, everything's going to kind of cook at e uh, not as even rates, and some things might right. burn. Well, this is kind of a le just loosely trussed, yeah. too. You know, you still have a little bit of space in between the thigh and the uh, tip of the breast, mm -hmm. and that's kind of on purpose. You don't want to cinch the whole thing up together like this, right? because then you're protecting much of the breast, which cooks um, or you're you're losing this this Area. gap here where you want to cook this thigh, which takes a lot longer to cook than the breast. So by doing a very tight truss, you kind of slow the whole thing down. You end up overcooking this portion of the breast. Mm -hmm. What do we truss it with? Butcher's twine. Butcher's twine. Yeah. yeah. Not nylon because it's going to uh, just melt. But in birds, we truss. And I am a big <laughs> believer in the trussing of the bird because in answer to your question, mm -hmm. had we not tied it into a compact package, the bird flays open. Now, it's all about surface area. The surface area here is now exposed. This is going to cook at a different rate than, say, this one, which mm -hmm. may not be like that. So we want to get it in here because we're trying to just keep everything nice and compact. Yeah. So um, a trussed bird is a uh, happy and compact bird, I find. But, um, um, you know, what's interesting is a lot of people are scared of the idea of trussing. I would truss the wings. They don't do it here. Um, but what you do is you just tuck them underneath, and that gives you the same effect. Yeah. If you are a fan of trussing or tying things up, I would just come underneath. I just tie a little knot here, tie a loop if you want to be fancy, with just a simple knot, and then you are How many pounds off is this the chicken? This is a four-pound bird. But this is, um, all right, so but what we've done, this is a recap. We have, it's a simple bird. Yep. It has been not cleaned because they don't believe in that here. It's been oiled first, salt and pepper last, because that way the salt and pepper adheres to the chicken. Kosher salt. Kosher salt because it's got that pronginess yeah. to it. Sticks in there. Yep. Don't be shy with the salt on a chicken. A chicken nope. loves salt. It's got a lot of surface area. It also gets very juicy, a lot of runoff. You will lose that salt. Now, your oven has been preheated at a very high temperature. 450 degrees. Not only the temperature of the oven is hot, but in the oven is the cooking vessel. Yep, we're I using a 12-inch skillet. Okay. And I think it's time to put this baby in the oven. Show us what All you right. got, please. So, uh, get that. as we said, it's on the oh, lower right. middle rack. This is going to be super hot, so just remember to right. use a oven mitt or a towel. Okay. Go ahead and go back in. All right. And this is a, a, a obviously an oven ready oven pan. Oven safe skillet. Yep. Oven safe, so that we don't have rubber or on the handle or a wooden handle. And um, bless Brian. Clean as you go. A clean yeah. kitchen is the right kitchen, but handling chicken because of the uh, great preponderance of salmonella and such. Clean as you go. Clean your hands. Clean as you go. So we've got some time now. We've got the, those birds in there. If you're just joining us, my name is David Voss from Cooking with One Hand. You can find us at cookingwithonehand.com. We're a show that play, plays at Mashable every week. And on the weekends, we come here Saturday what's, to Meredith Says Kitchen. Why 450? So, what's wrong with low and slow? And well, can you use cast iron? So low and slow is perfectly fine. But as we were saying, it's Tuesday night. It's 530. I'm on my way home. And I want to make dinner in under an hour. Um, so I'm cranking up the oven temperature to 450 degrees. If it was a Sunday, if I was home all afternoon, absolutely I'd do a low and slow chicken. Um, but for all intents and purposes, yeah. we're going to do 450. And I, I, think, uh, I think it's more to the point. It's not just a time-saving thing. Hot, fast, shock, toast that bird. The bird we did this last week on Cooking with One Hand, mm -hmm. we did it 470 degrees, 475 degrees. And we got it there and we spun it every now and then, almost a poor man's rotisserie. You want to get that crisp in there. You want to toast there fast. You go slow Same and... Same steps for Breville's smart oven? <laughs> I'll um, get back to you on that one. Yeah, uh, probably, oh, no, no, but yeah, I, 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 would, I would imagine, but I don't think you can fit a 12-inch... I could be wrong, and I might get in trouble for this, but I don't know if you can fit a 12-inch skillet oh, in so. those. Um, it would have to be a smaller skillet. But the simple point is, hot and fast. You know, yep. sir, uh, we're not... When you have pork, there are quality difference between different kinds of birds, in the, slow. yeah, oh. I mean, I would speak to this. 
Speak I, to this. I don't think. What did you know and when? I, I don't think that there's any. Okay. So strong. <laughs> strong. People feel strongly about their birds. Um, yeah. I think by doing a slow and low bird, you actually end up. It comes out just about the same. You'll see when we cut into this bird at the end of the. Uh, of but the that's show a fricassee. Here. That's a stewed chicken. And that's you don't to bring end it down up slowly. making it any more yeah. juicy. I don't think. This is know? a roasted chicken. You see, that's the great thing about chickens, is that there are so many ways to make them. There are fricassees. There are rotisseries. There are breasts that you can uh, uh, bread and fry. But when we want to make the quintessential roasted chicken that has two hallmarks of greatness, they are the crispy skin and the moist meat. We want to get in there quickly, hot, toast that skin. You want to do it early, not later, because if you do it slow, you're going to start gelatinizing and stewing that bird. Let's shock it, burn it up, not burn, but get it going toasty in the beginning, and then we start our cook. Should the chicken be covered when it's in the fridge? We say, I say no. The whole reason it's in the fridge, why am I yelling about this bird? <laughs> it's just a chicken. The reason I don't cover my chickens in the fridge is because I want to dry them. I want to air dry that chicken. It's dry that way when it goes into the oven. That Cuba Gooding and Jerry Maguire. Yeah. Jerry, I air dry. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, show me the money. No, I oh. air dry. <laughs> I air dry. Me too. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so, What's, so we one got thing that though, I just in. want to say real quick, we're going to leave that in the oven for 25 to 35 minutes, um, and we'll kind of get back to that part later. But just if you're wondering how long to leave it in there for. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're going to do another, could be considered weeknight roast chicken, yeah. but this time with potatoes on the bottom of the skillet. And uh, what's going to happen is we're going to rub the chicken down Let's a little do bit it. underneath Where's the uh, skin and on top with some paprika okay. and lemon zest. You want to take, take us to a bird? Let's yep. go get a chicken. I'm going to show you a little behind the scenes action here at America's Test Kitchen. I know you guys, if you've tuned in before, you've seen the small kitchen. You've seen the library. They thought we were saying hair dry. No, I left my hair dryer at home too. That's so funny. Um, okay, so this is the the great hallway. We've got all of our photo equipment. Um, but I want to take you into where the chicken is, and that is in our commercial walk-in. This is essentially a huge refrigerator. Same one they used in The Shining? Yes. No, I don't know. I don't know. Do you want to come over here? I don't want to block you. Don't bash me. Nope. OK. So come on in. This is our walk-in. And this is where we keep anything perishable. So come on in. You're probably going to hear a little fan. Um, so we keep all of our butter, all of our milk, we keep all of our produce. Every single team here at America's Test Kitchen, Cook's Country, Cook's Illustrated, the cookbook team, we all share this one fridge, so it's a really compact space. Let me just ask, can you, uh, do you need to take packaging off to defrost a frozen chicken? No, you can leave it in the packaging. Um, but that's a good question. Okay, so here is Brian's chicken. So yeah, we keep all of our protein down here, all of our produce up here, and why don't you take a look at how much butter we go through. That's a lot. That's probably about 30 pounds of butter we'll go through per week. All right. I'm going to go give Brian his chicken. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Make sure that's nice and closed. Come on back. Welcome on back if they're joining us. In the Guys. I've We're, got the chicken. We've missed you. Oh, We thanks. had nothing. I did. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, my name is David Voss from Cooking with One Hand. You might see us over at cookingwithonehand.com and over at Mashable. That's on Wednesdays. In the middle of the week, we show a menu of some great food. It's a strange show where I cook with one hand and film with the other. On Saturdays, we all get together here at America's Test Kitchen. Different cooks, different experts today. Can we keep the oven temp of what we have going at 450? 450. Yep. For about 25 to 35 minutes. Was I not talking? Was I not <laughs> talking? Yeah, People want to know. I mean, but uh, the, uh, the breast will register 120 and the thigh will register 135 degrees. And then at which point we'll shut the oven off completely and let the chicken sit. So, so we are welcoming. Was saying. As I was saying, we're welcoming. Well, thank you. Anytime so, we're ready. Bert is in the <laughs> oven. And uh, what we want to do today is build on the idea that we did uh, at cookingwithonehand.com all about roasting chicken. And there was a simple weekday roasted chicken, actually a recipe here of Brian's, that's uh, salt and pepper and some great techniques of Ashley. But now we're going to start uh, elevating your chicken aptitude a bit. And this is a wonderful chicken. Um, and we're going to start talking about how to season a chicken in a more elaborate way and different ways. So where to begin? Right. Um, so why don't we get the potatoes started because they take about nine minutes to brown. Okay, so potatoes, where do they fit into this? So this? the potatoes are going to go on the bottom of the skillet. We're okay. going to brown those. And then we're going to season the chicken both on top and underneath the skin. 
and then we're going to place it on top of the potatoes. Okay, so the potatoes the become a rack. Um, who's seasoning potatoes? Yeah. You? I'll put it in. You can just toss it around. Great. And what do you got? Salt, pepper. Salt, pepper, and oil. Okay. Now, okay. interesting thing I learned here at America's Test Kitchen, and it's um, counterintuitive, but chickens and potatoes cook at different rates. One would think that a chicken takes longer to cook. Not quite the truth, is it? No. Nope. And one of the things that we're trying to get... Um, taking out the wishbone on this chicken here like we did a few minutes ago with the other one. Right, so and the reason for that is that the chicken absorbs most of the heat in the oven while the potatoes are cooking. And, you know, now that cooking. we're starting to get your chicken smarts up there and we want to show you how to both get the uh, breasts juicy and uh, the legs juicy at the same time, we don't want the br dried out uh, breast, we're also going to introduce other aspects to it. The potatoes on Sunday dinner, everything comes out into that Norman Rockwell picture at the same time. We want your potatoes done perfectly like your chicken. Why Did you would we remove the wishbone? That's a good question. Did you remove the wishbone? Come on yes. over here. Take a look in here. The wishbone, think of the cathedrals, the great cathedrals, Chartres in France. Those are the superstructures that hold together the whole isness that is a bird. If you have that here, when it comes time to carve the chicken, you're going to be impeded by that superstructure. By pulling it out, carving time, you're going to look like a real pro. It's easier to carve. It's easier to carve. And also, you're going to see us doing some things where we push chickens down and manipulate them a bit more. You want to get that prong out there. The problem is you will not have a cooked wishbone with which to lock your pinkies and get your sweethearts, your babies, your daughters together and make wishes and hope that they come true. All right, we've got oiled, salted, pe peppered potatoes. Notice they cut them flat so they will stay here. This is the substrate to Can our bird. Again? So this is about a one inch thick potato. A Yukon, a Yukon gold. gold. Yeah. We just toss it with salt and pepper and we put it over about medium high heat. Do you have enough oil in that pan? Yes. Good. Because the uh, chicken's going to drip off a lot of fat and it'll be plenty of oil for the chicken right. to cook. And okay. the point of this is just to kind of jump start the potatoes before we add anything else on top. And that's because they take longer to cook. Yep. Great. Why you just kind of gold? What's that? Why you kind of gold? Because they're a medium starch potato, so they're not going to let out too much start, but starch, but they're not going to... Hold on to so, And you know, this is wonderful because a lot of the things we do, root vegetables mostly, when we're cooking with birds, um, <laughs> you don't have to have them around the side. You can use them underneath and use them as actual structure. That'll be a rack, and that'll keep our bird elevated so that it won't be sitting in its own fat. Does it need to be a nonstick skillet? <laughs> um, I think that would help you, but um, I'm a big fan of cast iron pans, so All no, right. uh, the answer would be I no. I told you guys to keep the question. Oh, okay. So, Sure. Well, the question seemed to be, <laughs> does one need a nonstick pan? I would say not necessarily. I like a cast iron pan. What do you say? I say, well, cast iron pans are great, but here we're using a nonstick pan so that it doesn't dry out and overcook the potatoes. Um, so, but so nor I mean, you could use a... You're politely disagreeing with me. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> it's going to be a long night. <laughs> no. <laughs> great. Um, um, all right. Okay. So now these are cooking, and they are... Uh, we don't want to toy with them because we want to keep them there so that we get a nice uh, Golden caramelized brown char. Football. Oh, sorry. sorry. Football comes and goes. Chickens <laughs> are forever. Come on. That's why we have TiVo. But now this is going to be more heavily seasoned chicken than our salt and pepper bird. So uh, what can we do about seasoning this? Okay, this bird we're going to season with a mixture of smoked paprika, uh, lemon zest, and thyme. So we'll just combine all these ingredients together in the bowl here. Is that fresh thyme or dried thyme? It's fresh thyme. The only time we use um, dried, ingredient, dried uh, herbs usually in the test kitchen is if we're doing like a, a stew or something like that, but we tend to use um, You can just kind of mix it up with fresh. your finger if somebody took your spoon away, just like this. <laughs> if that happens. If that happens like three times in a row. You know, no big deal. Okay, so a lot of times people like David will uh, encourage you to lift up the skin and I season beneath right -minded the skin. people. <laughs> Can you repeat the ingredients sure, slowly it's, uh, that are in there? Smoked paprika, lemon zest, thyme, salt, pepper, and vegetable oil. One more time. Third Backwards. time's a charm. Third time's a charm. <laughs> Smoked paprika, lemon zest, thyme, vegetable oil, salt, and pepper. And we're, we're and getting one NFL playoff game. <laughs> okay. And uh, Steelers. the smoked paprika is going to obviously give you that smoked flavor, something that would take a long time to achieve, but this gives us a nice shortcut into it. Uh, I love that you guys use lemon zest because that's where the essential oils of a lemon are. Yeah. Um, and if one were just to squeeze lemon juice in here, all you get is that tartness that you don't really get that great character and the perfumes of. So, um... Oh, you don't want any more? 
You want to just leave the potatoes there so they if develop a nice If I wanted to, cook. I would just leave them there. I want to move the pan. <laughs> so you want David, to ruin, you can't you're ruining move the recipe. The this is not my first time here. Shut the lights. We're out of here. This is <laughs> all right. Let's now go watch um, we're going to season this bird. <laughs> um, I think where Brian was headed was my way of uh, seasoning a bird is a little more involved. Um, folks like to you would you would use you want to slather the top. Yes. But I'm an advocate of getting underneath. Do you right. mind that? No, please do. Please get okay. underneath the skin. Let's turn it around so the camera guy can do this. Underneath, you see, if one were to season the top, as the chicken cooks and the fat runs off, so does all of the flavoring, or at least most of it. I want to get in here. I want to get against the flesh. That's what absorbs. Skin does not absorb. Flesh does. Now, what we want to do is we want to get underneath. The trick to this is that one does not want to, at any, any cost, rip the bird. If you poke a hole in there, as it cooks, it'll spread. So you want to get underneath, take your rings off, Take your time, get in there, move around. Now I even like to go around the drumstick and the thigh because that's good meat too. And that's darker meat that's gonna take longer to absorb. So work it around. Beautiful. Let's work this side. Now the middle of the breast, the cartilage holds it here. So you can snip this if you want or you can just work around it. But if you snip it, snip into the meat, not into the skin. Let's not disrupt the superstructure, the epiderm of the bird. Let's get in here and work the, the, the legs. And just because we can, and we love everything about this bird and this great flavor that Brian has built for us. Are chickens let's, ticklish? We'll see. They back were. here, The back here. Now look, you've got all of this area. Well, tell me if you disagree vehemently with what I'm about to do here, folks. But I want to get in here and under the back side here. It's a little slit. And now we've got entree to more parts of the bird. Look at that, the finger against the meat. Push into the meat, because if not, you're gonna pop the skin. Wonderful, huh? Who's impressed? I'll be impressed for all of you. We're impressed, David. Okay, good. Now, uh, rather than just, um, now, we're gonna go from here onto, into here, right? Yeah, but, yep. yeah, but first uh, you're gonna. Not, not yet. Uh, you wanna go ahead and put it underneath the skin? Do about half of it underneath the skin, and then we'll put the rest on top of the bird? Absolutely. So How come we don't take the skin off and roast that separately? <laughs> well, that's not a bad idea. But just don't, <laughs> just don't be diplomatic. I mean, you, you, you can take the skin off after you roast it. The, the skin kind of protects the meat while it roasts. But, and this comes to something I've been meaning to say here, and I don't want to ruin your world or come you, crashing down. Sorry. But there's no such thing as crispy skin roasted chicken. It's like a fleeting thing. It's just like a fleeting again, moment. Right there. There's no crispy skin roast chicken. It'll come out of the oven. Who let this guy in here? <laughs> It'll come out of, the, out of the oven crisp for one moment. But then as that bird rests like it's supposed to, it begins to steam. And yeah. that's it. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so you never met my grandmother, Jean, who made a beautiful roasted chicken with crispy skin. Um, you've never been to my house on a Sunday. You're welcome to, though. You seem like a nice <laughs> enough guy. Um, OK, now I'm getting underneath the bird. Now, Brian, you seem to want me to and hold off on one getting. One more time, what's the seasoning? Seasoning is smoked paprika, thyme, lemon zest, lemon zest, salt, pepper, salt and pepper, veg oil. Veg oil. Okay. Okay. Hey. Hey. okay. So, um, um, but what, in answer, what if you don't want to be that close to the chicken. You don't yeah, have to do that. I don't want to be that close to the chicken. So just rub it on the outside. Yeah. And make a sauce. It's fine. You can do that. You can do that. But you see, chicken skin is largely, if not mostly, fat. It's going to fry in the oven. It's a that high temperature is going to make this skin not crispy, dissolve, but and then it'll, 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 it'll be somewhere between a roast and a fry. Um, and this, now what we're doing is to take this outside and actually we'll finish it. Thank you, guys. Good. All right. So um, you have me holding off on, on. Yeah. You go ahead and just rub it all over with the. Um, since you got can your. Can I go on the outside? Can yep. I go on the outside? Yep. Okay, please. So now, over. okay, good. Now half of our of our skin is inside against the flesh. We're going to enjoy it, but being that we are uh, of two minds, the other half of our flavoring will come on the outside and it is a you're going to get that smokiness from the smoked paprika you're going to get the zest that gives us a bright flavor the salt is great when it mixes with the fat it's going to give us a uh, bit of a crisp there we're rubbing it around get everybody involved underneath and now we were talking about a flayed chicken look at that it's just like kind of lying there doesn't know what it wants to be when it grows up it wants to be together as one unified whole thus brother brian will Trust. Yeah, I'll take over. Yep, sure. Wonderful. I can do this. Thus, he will trust. <laughs> Again, it's just like kind of a light truss. So more to use uh, the legs as a handle. It's not. Whenever, not. This is a, it's a truck truck stop knot? 
This is a truck stop knot. Trucker's knot or ninja knot as it's known. You go around uh, <coughs> twice or three times and when you cinch it together, it won't come undone. Ugh. Why do they call it a truck stop knot? Because it's done at truck stops That's all across the land. That's what I thought. And then your final knot and then it's good. And Ash, tuck the wings back? Yep, tuck the wings back. Well, we have lots to do tonight, so don't go anywhere. We're going to take a little bit of a break. My name is David Welcome Voss. Over. I'm cooking with one no, hand. I'm down. here at America's Test Kitchen with both Brian, Brian Roof, Roof yep. and Ashley, Ashley Moore. Moore. We're going to do everything about roasting chickens. You stick with us. You will be a pro at roasting chickens. We've got one in the oven that's very simple. We've got a bit more of a seasoned one here that's going to work in a pan. We're going to show you how to brine birds. We're going to show you how to break Four down pounds. birds. Four pound birds. Four, Four pounds, We're yeah. going to show you how to actually be polite and not interrupt. It's going to be wonderful all over a great chicken here tonight. Um, come back very soon and learn everything about chickens. Um, wonderful. Thank can you. We, can we put this on top now?